Hey, this is John, Becky, and Will from Stud Group, and we are hopping into your feed today to talk about the Google Search Partners program because a pretty significant report just came out from Adalytics. That's ad with a D, not an N, uh, Adalytics. Um, they put out a lot of reports. Um, you might kind of say a little bit of a watchdog on Google and what Google does. And they just put out a significant report about the Google Search Partners program and issues that they're seeing with it. So I want to talk about that and what this means for you if you are a Google advertiser. I would say from what I've seen, a lot of people don't even know what Google Search Partners is. Uh, Becky, you talk to lots of people, reach out to us looking for help. Is it something that, that many advertisers you speak with know about or, or not? Yeah, it's incredibly rare for somebody to be the person that brings up Google search partners to me as a part of our conversation. Um, normally, it only gets brought up after we've done a thorough uh, evaluation of their current Google Ads campaigns, and uh, that's done as a part of our free consultation that we offer people. Um, once we're going through that evaluation, oftentimes we'll see one of two things happen. We'll we'll often notice that they're not opted into search partners, and we'll ask why. And I'll either get the answer that they didn't feel that the search partners network was working for them, um, or they won't even realize what Google search partners was or why they should or should not have been opted into it based off of their business. So um, yeah, super rare for somebody to and, you know just bring up, hey, what about my Google search partners campaigns? Um, you know, that's not something that happens very often. That makes sense. So for anybody watching this who doesn't know what search partners is, let me give you a quick, uh, quick rundown. Um, when you run ads on Google, um, search ads in particular, uh, text ads, you generally are thinking, okay, well, someone searches google.com, the ads are going to show up. And of course, that, that does happen. But the Search Partners Network is this other um, conglomeration of tens of thousands of other websites that are part of this, this, this program, the Search Partners program with Google. And it's a combination of things. So it could be retailer websites like Best Buy, for example. So you might go to bestbuy.com, you might be searching for something, and you might actually see ads show up on there uh, for, if it's something that maybe Best Buy they don't sell, but for whatever reason you're searching for insurance or something, you know, on bestbuy.com, you type that in, you'll often see ads that show up for, let's say, an insurance company. And those are powered by Google often. Um, so you see it on, on other e-commerce websites. You see it um, other search engines as well. You know, there's tons of small search engines that kind of have their own niche and audience and they're powered by Google or they are part of this network and the ads you see on those search engines like ask.com, for example, are powered by Google. And then you also have things like uh, parked domains, which um, there's no search taking place on a parked domain, so it's kind of misleading to call it a search partner, but it is part of the network where, you know, you, so you mistype a domain, you've probably seen this, you get to a website, it's not a working website, but you see a bunch of ads on there for something related to the, the, name, the domain name that you typed in. So those are all part of Google Search Partners network. And the way it works with your targeting and your Google campaign, so you can, you can target this in... Um, in search campaigns and in performance max campaigns. Now with search campaigns, you have the option to opt in or out of the network. So you either say, yes, I'm willing to show my ads across all of these, these other websites or not. With performance max, you don't have an option. Google forces you to do it. Um, and even with the search side of things, you can't pick and choose which domains you're comfortable with. And that kind of segues back to this report that Analytics just put out because they are claiming um, and showing documentation that there are a lot of very, very suspect websites that are part of the search partners network and where ads are serving, where advertisers uh, definitely would not want their ads to be serving. Everything from you know adult content websites to um, a lot of websites owned by governments or companies that um, are part of countries where there are sanctions, you know, where businesses are not allowed to work with uh, those governments or um, or companies, um, as well as stuff in the political space, such as you know uh, news sites that um, advertisers do not want to show their ads on because of concerns about the quality, maybe or accuracy of the news, and yet their ads are showing up on those because of the search partners aspect. So there's a lot of people who are um, not happy right now because they're seeing examples of their ads showing up on these websites where they would never in a million years want their ads to show up on. And Google is essentially saying, hey, this is a very, very tiny problem, very, very small, small you know, section of traffic and whatnot. And we're looking into the report, but it's not a big deal. I 
wouldn't take Google's word on it, frankly. Um, I would not surprise me at all if um, if what Adalytics is inferring or not inferring, but claiming here is is accurate. Um, but because of the way that Google's structured right now, the question is, do you say, no, I want to opt out of search partners entirely because I don't want any kind of this risk? Or do you say, okay, I'm willing to take this risk and stay in search partners? Because again, you don't have the options. It's either in or out, opt in or out. So a lot of lot to think through from kind of a brand safety perspective. And each brand is going to make their own decision about what they're comfortable with. From a performance standpoint, Will, can you kind of share what we see in terms of how performance on search partners compares with other, you know, with just regular Google.com traffic and what our approach is, again, strictly from a performance standpoint for our clients? So performance-wise, historically, we've typically recommended opting in for the search partners network at the beginning, unless you have a convincing reason or, or data telling you that you, you shouldn't. So if it's a brand new account, you haven't run ads before, typically we're gonna say, hey, what is the what does the data show? Oftentimes you will see similar results to Google. It'll be at a, a lower volume, but the, the conversion rate may be really good and oftentimes at a lower cost than what you're gonna be seeing from Google. The volume again won't match what you're seeing on Google's primary uh, search platform but it's there. And then on the flip side, you may quickly see, hey, we're getting search traffic through the search partner network, but it's it's not converting. Uh, we're spending money there, but it's not converting, and so it's just as easy as opting out of that. And that's typically the approach that we take in allowing the, the data to drive that decision-making process. So you know, if you ask me the question, should I stay in the search partners network or not? I would say it comes down, it's a risk-benefit analysis based upon kind of how, how, how you're looking at, at brand safety. And it's going to be different for each, each business, also depending upon the size of the business, kind of the risk involved and whatnot. So, for example, there's a lot of Fortune 500 companies right now who, you know, because of their size, they have a target on their back um, of people who are always trying to, you know, get them in trouble for anything that could be perceived as a problem. They have, you know, massive um, kind of brand equity that they've built up, a reputational equity that they're trying to maintain. So you're seeing some of them say, hey, we absolutely cannot take the risk of being on search partners. And there's been a couple, according to this analytics report, that have literally stopped running performance max campaigns entirely right now because there's not currently a way to opt out of the search partners network uh, from PMAX campaigns. So they're basically saying, Google, until you give us the option to opt out, we're going to stop running PMAX, which is a pretty, pretty significant deal. Um, and then you have you know plenty of other advertisers where it's probably not as big of a concern. I mean, frankly, it's, it's not like... It's not like I've, I've, I've never seen, I don't think, a situation with our clients where someone has complained to them and come to them and said, hey, your ad is showing up on a problematic website. That's a problem. So it's not like this is happening all the time, you know, live and creating tons of problems out there in the world that, that we've seen and been aware of. So I, I wouldn't say by default you have to opt out of the partner's network if you're getting, you know, good cost per conversion, good ROAS from it in your data. But again, something to be aware of, something to look into. My biggest hope from this report is that it forces Google to be more transparent because they're not transparent with what networks or what websites are part of the, the network, um, where your ads are showing, when your ads do show on the network. And like we talked about, you can't even opt in or out for performance max. Um, and also, they don't, they're not transparent with telling you what search terms triggered your ads, even in your search campaigns, to appear on search partner uh, websites. So I would love if this, this can push Google to give us more control and more transparency into the platform so we can make, again, educated decisions on a brand by brand basis about whether we wanna be in the platform or not. Anything else you would add to that, Becky, Will? No, I think that you guys explained it really well. Um, I think that there are people that are really into cause marketing uh, as a part of their brand. Those are the ones I think that probably would want to stay out of this right off the bat. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Awesome. Well, hope this was helpful to everyone watching. Uh, we'll put some other videos on the screen about other topics and uh, tap that subscribe button for more content just like this. Until next time, take care.